in this video I'm tearing into this battery pack that came out of our 2013 Tesla Model S85 with 201,000 miles on it. This is the pack that I swapped out in last week's video. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link here at the top of the screen and one down below in the description so you can go watch that as well. And please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. As you probably already have noticed, I'm doing this outdoors in the backyard on the ground and I had to do it in steps and cover it with the tarp in between. There was also some rain in between and made it more difficult. Also, I'm using basically basic hand tools, nothing fancy here to open up this pack. But I did get myself a pair of uh, safety gloves with the leather gloves that go over it so that I can work on uh, high voltage batteries. Um, so I would recommend that you do that as well. Overall, if you're basically careful enough here, um, you're never actually really getting to extremely high voltage, um, except maybe for pulling out the pyro fuse. And as you can see, it takes a little time to open this up. I'm using a potty knife and a hammer and just kind of start working my way around this. This is a <clears throat> probably the most difficult part of it all. And I don't know, years ago I watched Rich Rebuilds and he just torn this thing up that he had. <laughs> and uh, so I just, like you can see here, I had a little help there with a hoist pulling on it. But I was careful enough so actually that I can reuse that lid if I need to. So it could be put back on, it's not all torn up. But it takes some time here to get in there and open this up. It's a little tricky, especially doing it the first time. So if I would do it again, I know much better how to go about it and probably could get that lid off even cleaner than uh, I did here. So. Well, here I got it all opened. So I just got done opening up this uh, 200,000 mile battery pack, 201,000 and some miles. It looks brand spanking new, no moisture inside, nothing. Looks really, really good. It was a really good pack, only had about 10% degradation and that is after over 200,000 miles and nine years in a Tesla Model S. So let's check some voltages. Right here we got 17 volts negative. Right here we got a 125 positive. So there is still high voltage on this pack, obviously. So that was at the front at the pyro fuse. Now this back here are the contactors. There's zero on this side. Let's see. 1.3. Huh. So we show nothing at the contactors at this point, huh? No matter which way I go, we got, yeah, maybe one volt or whatever. So seems like the pyro fuse um, eliminated the power back here. Let's see if we can pull this off. Let's see what we got here. 22 volts, must be holding it backwards. There we go. Yeah, about 22 volts on uh, this individual module, which seems to be about right. Not sure how they're hooked together. Let's see, that still shows 22. Here, that's, oh, that's the same. Uh, 
that's the same huh here we go 44 volts right here so that's where it adds up they're going in series bring this up some yeah so going across here we got the 44s and somewhere this will add up into almost 400 volts in series so well at this point we just have to start disconnecting these individual uh, modules and see if we can take them out of here there is still coolant in it which is on this side here those are the coolant lines I don't have an evacuating machine for coolant, um, which I believe would hook up right here to these and probably put pressure on and blow it out, I assume, or maybe puts vacuum on and sucks it out. So here we got more coolant lines going to these two modules. Um, not sure what I could do here. Um, hmm, unless I possibly would have the other end with some hoses where I could put some pressure on and uh, blow some of this out maybe before I disconnect the lines. Um, if I disconnect the lines, obviously stuff will get right under these modules here and maybe into the modules and we don't want that. So gotta come up with something here I did get the other side of the quick connect out of our salvage Tesla Model S so that's what you're seeing there and I was trying to hold that in place with a clamp it's got to be pressed together the the battery side plus that piece that I took out of the car so that it opens up uh, the, the valves in there so that's the idea here and this is kind of tricky to get it down on there uh, far enough to actually open up the lines so I had to uh, try here a couple of things and struggled a little bit with it but uh, the idea is once that's on there I can use compressed air and blow into the ingoing line and then the coolant should come out on the other side that's where the hose is and then i have a bucket there to catch all that and i actually uh, want to reuse that coolant i'm gonna filter it and uh, reuse it because i will need a little bit there's a little bit of loss um, when you swap batteries so uh, then i can top off with that instead of having to buy new coolant but yeah, so eventually I got this on there so it would stay and I was able to put the compressed air to it and slowly get that coolant pushed out of there. And you can see here I got quite a bit out of it actually. It was about three or four quarts that I was able to push out of that battery pack. The next step was disconnecting the coolant lines and that was a little tricky you can see there there's this yellow clip that needs to be pulled out and that will then release the coolant line on the fitting and then you got to pull the line off the fitting and so I started at the back of the battery or actually at the front <laughs> Uh, where the modules are stacked higher up so I can get easily to it and practice there before I get to all the other coolant lines that are very hard to get to but uh, yeah that's uh, what you need to do is pull these clips loose and then pull the line off and you got to do that on every pack or on every module every module has an in and an out so there's two lines on each module where you need to do this 
And so the first module was really easy because it was way up there, easy accessible. And from there on, it just gets harder. I got the high voltage gloves back on and started disconnecting the electrical and removing hold down brackets so that I can get off that first module and that would be the first success <laughs> getting the first module out and uh, there we go got that out working on the second one now trying to get it out and here we go second one's out now starting to disconnect all the modules, all the electrical there down the middle, which is quite a bit of work, uh, just using hand tools. Uh, I used that electrical drill there a little bit to speed up the process, but I broke all the bolts loose by hand to make sure I get a good feel for it so I don't break anything. But it's quite some work. And then uh, I disconnected another coolant line and got an other module out, removed more brackets until it started raining and then covered up the battery. The next day when I uncovered the battery with horror, I found there was something bad that happened overnight. And we'll see that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.